A very warm welcome in everybody to the virtual Nacon studio. I'm Miss Belltree and I will be your host today as we bring you the draw for Blood Bowl 3's 2024 World Championship. I am joined by three legends of the Blood Bowl community. Uh, to the right of me on your screens, we have a man whose glorious successes include winning the NAF kickoff cup the blood bowl super league blood bowl two's blitz pit and a pair of fumble majors he is always keeping us fantastic it's jimmy fantastic hello jim hello uh in the square right underneath me a giant of both the online and tabletop blood bowl scenes he also has won blitz pit he was the first person ever to win back-to-back -back blood bowl super leagues he won what I think was one of the most dramatic Blood Bowl 2 Chalice Finals ever. And as I understand it, up until very recently, he was also the top ranking 2024 uh, for this year, tabletop player as well. He is, of course, the one and only Andy Davo. Hi, Andy. Hello. And completing our roster today, we have Vitok from Nacon, who will conduct the draw for us. Like me, he cannot equal Andy and Jim's uh, record, perhaps, of winning Blood Bowl tournaments. Although I am told by his colleagues that he is absolutely dominant in the in-house Nacon championships. Um, he definitely still qualifies as a legend of the community in my eyes, because he is the one who has been a massive driving force between this Blood Bowl World Championships. Vitok, hi, how are you? Hi, hi everybody. Uh, so we should get right into it, I think. Are the 2024 World Championships, 64 of the best bud bowlers on the planet. Um, I think probably I should throw straight to you, Vitok, to give us a bit of context as to how we have got these 64 bud bowl players together. How have people qualified for this World Championship? Yeah, the, the idea for us was to, to be able to, to set up a competition that gathers uh, uh, a bit all the communities that exist on Blue Bowl 3. Uh, you know, before Blue Bowl 3, there was Blue Bowl 2. There is a lot of uh, of, uh, of other competition uh, on, on board game, on Fumble also, but here really focusing on, on Blue Bowl 3. The idea for us was uh, to give the opportunity to the big leagues uh, out there from anywhere in the world to uh, conduct uh, a competition where the winner or several of them for the, for the biggest one will send their coach uh, to the world championship and also you know in the game we have the official ladder we have the the, the champions cup like the playoff playoff of the official ladder being organized and we wanted to reward all those people by a end of the year tournament with a, with great prize and that's how everything has been uh, has been set up and the the format for this one because i think when you have all these different uh, competitions one of the things that's really exciting to me is we've got people who've qualified for this tournament by playing in eternal leagues we've got people who've played on all the different platforms we've got people coming from all different countries but the format for this competition it's a resurrection star tournament i thought maybe i'd ask andy as someone who's played in so many different contexts maybe if you can explain why for a lot of people this is like the the gold standard of competitive blood bowl is this uh resurrection star format uh, <clears throat> i think resurrection is, is for me the the best format because you get to keep your team so you know what you're going in with and whatever happens to that team you get it back at the end of the next game and you typically are also playing with just enough skills so the team is on a bit of a disaster but also not too many skills that the objective switches to killing things or um yeah or other various ways of winning like one turning it's mostly i'd say it's the highest skill bracket yeah, I guess the thing I could have explained a bit better there, resurrection format for anyone who's not familiar, that means that your players don't uh, suffer permanent injuries, they don't gain or, or they don't gain SVP between games, gain levels. So you've got the same team from one match to the next. Uh, and the way that the teams are built is using a tier system. I think anyone who's been uh, paying attention to the build up to this uh, from Nacon, they've published all of the, the tiers of the different uh, teams. I'm, I'm going to bring them up on screen for a second. I, I wonder if uh, Jim might like to come in with a comment on the, the different tiers of these teams and and when he saw these tiers perhaps uh which of them jumped out as as the ones which he was expecting to see a lot of so we've got dwarves dark elves lizards orcs and shamming undead in tier one and then well i didn't need to read them all out they're on the screen but we've got these these four different tiers of teams and and different amounts of cash and skills that are available to each of them yeah well of course the tiers that jumped out to me were dwarf tiers because uh i didn't think anybody would take them because they look uh, <laughs> you know it's just not it's not good for them it's, it's great for lizard men 
it's really it's pretty good for orcs good for undead um even though they are you know in tier one there so they get less stuff six six skills is totally standard no restrictions on those um there was an option to stack skills but that was the cost was prohibitive so i didn't expect anybody to stack skills um and you really want to make more use of primary skills if you can so we're really looking at like six skills for tier one seven for tier two and then you know a few more for tier three and four so i i thought it would be dominated by tier one the tier one teams um of orcs undead lizards dark elves and then from tier two wood elves a great package for wood elves um and then you know it's necron scape and you expect some people to like who like them to use them <laughs> so this is the point where we can cross check what jimmy thought with what's actually happened because we now have all of the official rosters in uh 12 shambling undead as you predicted there orcs very high on nine lizards on eight uh wood elves on seven dark elves on six the big stand out for me imperial nobility five rosters we're not sure where that uh came from uh skaven also on five with necromantic two for humans two for owa elf union chaos chosen black orcs each on one andy do any of those jump out to you as, as surprising or, or perhaps just the nobility uh so I, I think the fact that there's only five necro teams is actually stand out because they're, they're a very popular team so the fact that only four other people have taken them as well that's so i'm one of them uh that, that out of 64 people and four people thought they were the best team it's interesting i uh, uh, i do like oh sorry no no go go go, go ahead uh, i i do like also the fact that there's quite a lot of diversity you read out a lot of different teams there but we haven't got you know, 19 orcs or you know, 23 dark elves or whatever so it should be we get a lot of race x versus race y games rather than lots of mirrors yeah, just, just to say to everyone in chat, we, we know Andy's microphone's having a little bit of a struggle. We haven't got uh, a way of quick fixing that while we're on, I'm afraid. So it's just, uh, it's going to be a little bit up and down, but we think we can hear you all right. I can certainly hear most of the time, but that was me cutting you off there because I thought you were you were finishing and I think it might have just been your mic dipping for a second. Um, Vitok, this is the first world championship, but we did have the season finals at the start of the year. Maybe could you um, explain to us what's changed and, and how you think uh, this is progressing as a competition or, or I suppose as a new competition? Yeah, actually we, we organized season finals so at the end of last year, beginning of this year, uh, really having in mind the world championship. But the idea for us was to do some tests uh, at, the, at the season scale. So really having everyone, everyone to season finals being qualified through, through season two. Uh, and uh, on, on well, steady, setting up official uh, uh, cast, obviously, setting up all those tiers, the formats. So actually, we've made some tests and we think it worked very well. We saw uh, the community and the player very receptive to the idea of, uh, of having a, an official tournament like that. And we really wanted to, to continue doing so. We did a try, you know, of having a, a, a league sending their winner only with NAF at the time. So it was really to to see how it will how we will manage having having coaches coming from different horizons uh, to uh, to the to the tournament, and it worked pretty well. And then in terms of format itself, well, we had to adapt the tiers because new teams, new factions have released to Blood Bowl three since then. Uh, so it obviously changed the the balance of forces uh, in place at, at this uh, at this time. And, uh, and we did some uh, some uh, some uh, um, say some changes as well. It was not a group stage uh, for the first uh, first uh, uh, for the first round uh, during the season final, but we find out that group stage can can bring a lot of fun actually and, and a lot of diversity as well. And then after you know for the knockout, we used to do what we called double knockout. Like if you're out, you're in the loser bracket. Uh, but uh, uh, looking at the competition, looking at what is done as well elsewhere and so on really figured out that we wanted to have a way to have people playing several games to, into a confrontation. So it's not just a best of one, but maybe it's a best of three, kind of, uh, in the competition, since Blood Bowl is all about dice roll. We wanted to make sure we can reduce a bit the luck factor and make sure the, the best coach can uh, win at the end. Dice in Blood Bowl, don't tell the coaches that, that's absolutely... <laughs> um, can't go with that. I'll, I'll bring up very quickly the tournament schedule, which you were just alluding to there. So uh, the draw obviously is today, the 25th of October. There's going to be a group phase that runs from October 27th through to November 18th. And then the knockout phase, which goes from round one, uh, has a week from the 18th to the 24th, round two, 24th, December 1st. And then we have the quarterfinals, semifinals and final all on the same weekend, which is super exciting because 
myself and Jimmy and Andy will all be getting together to deliver that one to you from a live studio, which we're all super excited about. Um, while I've got this on, because we don't have a version of this that quite fits the page all in one go, I'm just going to bring up the um, oh, the uh, the prizes as well. Vitok, would you like to talk to us? Because I know people are going to be excited. I think these prizes are incredible. Would you like to talk to us about the prize pool for this year as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was important for us, you know, for this uh end of the year tournaments uh, to come with cash prize. Uh, uh, so like actually the best performing coaches uh, of the year uh, will have their, their reward, I would say. And obviously it will uh, it will make them want to play seriously even more, I guess, when uh, when you see such prizes, uh, especially for the final eight, where we expect uh, what well, the tension and the level of loot ball to be to be the highest. So we really want to do that, but we still wanted to have some reward as well that more like you can uh, uh, kind of brag about it uh, after the tournament. So uh, a logo for the world champion, a title in game, though that we have uh, added that in the game, like 2024 world champion. Uh, I think it's something when you face someone in the ladder and you display that can be kind of scary probably for the for your opponents. Uh, and we want to do still something, you know, for, for people that made it to the to the final eight as the uh, WC challenger and for all the participant WC contender. And there is something else actually uh, uh, that we haven't announced yet, but I, I wanted to, to to tell is uh, there will be a specific uh, uh, logo as well uh, that will be awarded to uh, the community that sent their, uh, their player who win uh, the championship. So basically, if the world champion comes from one of the community, everybody that participated in one of their competition, so not necessarily the qualificating one, but any competition they organized through the year, they will receive a special logo with the logo of the league on the on the official supplier of all champion sentence on it you know uh so it's kind of a, of a reward as well for the league that uh, that participated and we wanted to to do that so if if the winner come from the nakon uh, uh official ladder then well this logo will be lost and it will be for next year uh, or maybe i will use it myself i don't know it's, it's possible <laughs> But, uh, but otherwise, yeah, I wanted to make sure as well the all the league members can cheer for someone uh, and they will have a reward for that as well. So I think a lot of you watching will already know this. Um, Andy uh, qualified for the NACON World Championship via the NAF World uh, Championship Qualifier. Uh, Jimmy qualified by Bubble Super League. I have stumbled in. I was not expecting when I agreed to host this. I actually did not have a ticket, but I've wound up with a ticket because Seabra was unable to take his uh, qualifying ticket from the qualifying tournament. So I was the next person up. I was one spot down the rankings from Seabra. So I have also now got a ticket. So obviously none of us can have anything to do with the draw that's about to happen. That is absolutely going to be all Vitox job. So we're going to switch uh, over to uh, uh, to show you guys the draw now as it happens. Are you are you ready to, to take us through it, uh, Vitox? We'll talk, yeah, take us through it on the talking, but are you ready to, to yeah, do yeah, the wheel? Yeah, Ready to, to spin the wheel uh, <laughs> differently and to, well, to let the, the wheel decide the fate of, uh, of our players. Yeah, so this is the wheel. This is how we're going to decide the groups. So again, 64 players, groups of four, uh, Vitok. We'll start spinning now, and uh, then I guess it's up for. Uh, well, I'd love Jimmy and Andy to to come in as much as they'd like on on the groups as they start to happen. Yeah, what I what I want to say as well is we will first draw the first player of group A, then the first player of group B in that order. So we complete each group before moving to the next. So it's clear for everyone, and no surprise as well. Perfect. Let's go. I'm excited to see the wheel spin. If it looks like I'm looking off camera, it's because it's easier for me to see the wheel off camera, guys, just if you're confused why I'm looking to the side here. First name out of the hat or off the wheel. It's Blue Max on Necromantic Horror, not a coach I'm familiar with. I don't know if Jimmy or Andy is. No idea. Maybe <laughs> one of the one maybe one of the console coaches, I would think. This is um, yeah, he's, um, he's from the PlayStation community actually, and, and maybe you will know his name after this tournament. Uh-huh. That's one of the great things about this tournament, actually, is is again the number of different qualifying routes means we've got a lot of different uh, different unfamiliar people. Uh, Vitok, I'm going to say, do just keep spinning because this is going to be a long process. So don't uh, let us talking slow you down. Mm. Oh, oh, this is a name oh. I definitely know. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. you were laughing. He's the, he's the best, isn't he? He's the best in the world with his favourite team. So um, yeah, this is pretty incredible. A legend, a legend that is. Okay. So that's the first name in Group B. No, it's the second of Group A. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I misunderstood. Oh, wow. So that means uh, 
We already have two out of four, four in group uh, A. And Le Peg on Shambling Undead. Oh, I don't envy anyone who lands in this group knowing that uh, K-Fog's in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's another PlayStation qualifier. And... Ooh. Oh! <gasps> so close! <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting for what it wasn't as much as it was. <laughs> yeah. So you have you have your full group A. So a full we move into group B. A full group A. Um we don't have the list in front of us unfortunately because of the way this is set up. Uh so uh, I'm not certain I can read all the names off to you just now, but it was um K Fode and Jasek and Blue Max the first one, and then there's a name I'm forgetting already. Le Peg. Le Peg, thank you. Jatsik qualified from a champ, the you know champs ladder. Uh, well, not the champs ladder, playoffs. Mm -hmm. playoffs. Another shambling undead. We're going to see a lot of these because there are twelve of them. Frankie goes first up in Group B. Uh, it's probably a yeah. Oh, PC is Spanish. NBB is how he qualifies. Arzawain, we have our first of the Imperial Nobility Force. Arzawain uh, coming through. Uh, Andy had a knowing nod there. I don't know if that was a, a nod of nobility or Arzawain. Undead into nobility? This is one that I know very well. Viking Cop plays in Rebel. He's another Spanish coach. Uh, really, really uh, fantastic uh, coach and streamer. Um, I think this is already a fun fun uh, division with uh, Lizards and Undead and Nobility. Can we get a fourth different race in the group? We can't. This is the Imperial Nobility group. <laughs> <laughs> Ratimo. General Ratimo finishes out our group. Two Imperial Nobility. Well, a very good chance then that we'll get at least one Imperial Nobility through to the knockout stages. I should not underestimate the Nobility. And here oh. he is. First in Group C, Jimmy Fantastic. What are you hoping for, Jimmy, with your Dark Elves? Um, that I don't lose every game. <laughs> <laughs> what faction do you wish? I've had the best start in the practice. Oh, it's... Ticking so close. Old World Alliance with Kelethorn. Andy, we've lost you completely. You're you're silent. Kelethorn. Tumish. Qualified from the Big and Belgian Bowl. Oh, okay. Tumish. Oh, Tumish has just qualified through Chalice, hasn't he? Yeah, T Tumish knocked me out of Chalice, so I know exactly how good Tumish is. Very, very good player, but he was playing Skaven in that game. He's playing Orcs here, so I, I don't know his uh, his Orc um, his orc experience, but definitely a very good coach, as you said, just qualified through the ladder playoffs. And Trauk on Shambling Undead. Trauk is another of the Rebel qualifiers um has got a fouling build i believe for undead i'm pretty sure that there is a dirty player on this roster so has a very specific way of playing trout that uh, i know he's very comfortable with what's nice about that group is there's another group of four different races so. yeah mm -hmm. it's true ceremony on shambling undead um what I can contribute on Ceremol is that I watched a video on, I think, Jimmy's stream the other day of him mm -hmm. performing what I think is one of the most incredible plays I've ever seen, a defensive one turn that was the sort of chain push that very, very few people would spot. Yeah, incredible. Uh, UK BBL, he qualified through. Beat me in the final. Ooh. And he will be going up against Skaven from Jurpils. German from Blood and Tears is how he qualified. PlayStation. Our first human team. American mm. ladies, I think. An American, an American. TRBBL. I was going to say, I think that might be TRBBL. Not familiar with them. 
individually. And Gavilas on lizards. Yet another interestingly varied division, which means that at some point we are going to get all of the teams that <laughs> that are left on the uh, undead and lizards <laughs> all crammed together. One undead per division so far. Long may it continue. A big ol from Jimmy because that is the champion of the season finals in January Strider on Wood Elves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, incredible, incredible. I think he qualified through Chalice, didn't he? I've got a feeling he had to qualify again, despite being the defending champion, but he did, because he's pretty good at the Blood Bowls. <laughs> That's a serious bar. You've already won it once and you still have to go again. And I believe needed family permission, despite having won all that prize money last time out. <laughs> oh, pie bot. Era BB qualifier. Yeah, a rough matchup as well. Really rough, yeah. That that put me off lizards. I thought I, you know, I figured Strider and Kefo could be on Woodies and did not want to face them. <laughs> oh, speaking of Woodies, speaking of Woodies. <laughs> okay, well, definitely not uh, up there with Strider. I wouldn't say, but uh, looking forward to playing. I actually played him in your Super League, Jim. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all played off. Quality, some good quality in the Super League. Oh. <laughs> wow, what a division this is. Jaylev coming off a brilliant, uh, I was about to say summer, it wasn't summer at all, but a brilliant uh, Athens experience with the U Team USA Euro Bowl team that finished second in a huge upset at the Euro Bowl. So Jaylev, a very, very good player, taking a team that uh, I don't think many people have taken one other coach, but which I think did look very, very interesting in this tiering. They got a lot of a lot of extra skills. Yeah, not, not in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm worried yeah. that I'm in the group of death. That's what I'm worried about, yes. Ooh. <laughs> well, it could be another one. <laughs> Talking about Euro Bowl. Reigning Euro Bowl champion and world number one in tabletop, Olivier Dulac. That is one of the, uh, the giants of the competition for share. Said to me yesterday, we wanted to play me again. So let's see this. Not me in this group. <laughs> <laughs> the only Alvin Union team I don't know the coach, did he tell me? Uh, PlayStation qualifier. So, yeah, that's the 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 consoles we're not so familiar with. Are we as, as PC coaches, all of us? So, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. bit of a wild card there. Oh, Ooh. oh. <laughs> Shirts. Do we know shirts? Again, not a name for me to me. I, I believe he knocked Andy out of the Crenball uh, qualifier. Did, yes, he did. <laughs> I remembered him. <laughs> American, there you go. Oh, I thought that was going to get past everyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we've managed to find two people who beat me in games so far. What? It's only news because it's rare, Andy. <clears throat> <laughs> Zahu on Skaven. That completes the group, doesn't it? Three edgy teams and eight teams. And dead. Mm. Shamba is doing amazing work for us, uh, keeping chat updated with all the completed groups. Fantastic. Nuru on Shambling Undead. Would I be right to say Nuru was uh, a Blood Bowl 2 Chalice regular, or am I mixing him up with someone? He absolutely was, yeah. He also played in the World Cup on uh, Blood Bowl 2, I remember. Yeah. Mm. Solid solid player. Rio Bravo on Dark Elves. Once again, unfamiliar names, which is exciting to me that there's a lot of these names I don't know. Mm. He qualified through Blood Bowl Ukraine. There you go, that was his league. Mm. I do feel like there's got to be a lot of the big bashes still left on this uh, wheel because I don't think I've seen that many orcs yet. But yes, another Skaven team. Mm. 
Yeah, he's been in uh, Chalice a bit. Spanish coach again, I think. Yep. And Matapalitos, Shambling Undead, who uh, completes the group. So <clears throat> Mexican qualified through the Mexican Football League. Didn't know that existed. <laughs> I believe it's a world championship. Exactly, yeah. it's a true world yeah. championship. Yeah. Breaky T on the Lizardmen. Definitely, we've seen Breaky in some big tournaments before. He's a, he's a legend for the spreadsheets work that he does. <laughs> <laughs> he's made some incredible, some incredible stuff for following the tournaments. The place tabletop. I'll be seeing you in a couple of weeks' time. Mm hmm. Oh, I saw Andy for a second. <laughs> Bala is, I believe, the only Chaos Chosen. Difficult to get this team to work. So it'd be great if they can get out of the group stage, but they've not picked one of the favourite teams. It is me. <laughs> it's me. Got hard of room now. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's me then. That's Andy on Necro, who I know you didn't love the tearing of. You wanted one more, one more skill or or ten more SPP, but or ten more TV, sorry. But we know how good you are on Necro. Who else have I got? Not what else? No. Just <laughs> <laughs> Lamar Sayer again, a name who will be familiar to people who used to watch the Bubble Two Chalice. He was in there a lot. Yeah, yeah, big regular on there. Uh, yeah. Tough group. Yes. Does look like a especially tough one for those Chaos Chosen, but maybe they have got uh, the build to make it work. And I think that's a really interesting conversation, actually, which maybe we'll, we'll touch on a bit at the end. People choosing between um, the team that fits the tiers best and the team that suits their personal playstyle the best. So Patsky on Shambling Undead to start the next group. She's group. PlayStation. Group I, I think. If Sham is correct, it's Group I. Spanish <laughs> coach. Very good Spanish coach. Yep. Everyone's a very good coach. I'm just going to keep saying everyone's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Some are scarier than others, though. <laughs> I was happy not to get Diamond, put it that way. <laughs> Spitfire on Orc. Uh, this is we're getting finally getting one of those big Orc divisions. Another PlayStation. Surge Valence on Skaven. That was that was so close. Was right on the border there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Spartacus on lizard men. I I feel like I'm repeating myself if I keep saying names we've seen a lot in Blood Bowl Two Chalice. Yeah, he was he was though he was a, he was pretty regular in, in Chalice and he qualified through Chalice in Blood Bowl Three. So chance as he's got double orcs and scaven in that group. Coke guy was the rebel champion last season on orcs. He switched to Shambling Undead here, but. Definitely a, a very good coach. Rebel, I think I think Rebel is still the biggest private uh, league and so not a small one to win. I mean, that wheel stops. There's still so many really strong, like really <laughs> strong names on there as well. Wow. Now this one is interesting to me because Magic, brilliant coach, but I've always seen him being brilliant with elves. So Orcs was a surprising choice. Yeah, I, I was the same. I, I, I was sure I remembered him being like pro elves and stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. he's been playing a lot of orcs on Blood Bowl 3 because orcs are pretty good, aren't they? On Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> <laughs> Winteros. Huge. Qualified through Rubble and so a top, top Russian coach that he's going to be very, very strong. A great Blood Bowling nation, the Russians, aren't they? Mm. <laughs> 
There are a lot of very good Russian hardball coaches. No crucible, I think. Is that right? And that's one of the top Italian coaches, Serafino. On what else? There are some very, looking... very good coaches on what else in this tournament. I am not one this of is, them. <laughs> this is looking a brutal group. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Aracius on Orcs. Canadian uh, qualified through the Quebec Football League. We're getting there, guys. It was a lot of names on the spin to start off with. There's a lot fewer on there now. P.T. Poo's on Chambling Undead. The Tiki Hut. <laughs> and Rock on Orcs. Definitely shaping up for another bashy division here. Qualified through the ladder. He's been doing quite well on ladder. Hmm. Oh, that's the end of that group. I've lost track of where the groups are. Apparently that was all of group A. <laughs> oh. oh, I've got so much. So well, either we have or uh, or uh, Shamba has. Perhaps Vitok can correct us. Was that the end of a group there, group K? Maybe Vitok's lost track yeah, as well. That, that, that's, no, that's first. It was 20 left, so it means uh, five group left. That's the first of uh, for group, yeah. So for Foyer is the first of the new group? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bembo Baggins. Wizard Mirror. Mm. We would use some of those. It's a lizard group. Mm -hmm. it's, the wheel is small enough now that we can see the races on there. I can see a few Necro on there still as well. And oh, very nearly was, but it isn't Mr. Page on Blackhawks. Instead, it's Skaven. How do you like the Skaven into Lizard matchup? It's obviously. The one turn for the Skaven, I suppose, is strong, but the chance of just being pummeled seems quite high with the Lizards. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? It's it's brutal for the, the line rats and stuff, but yeah, the Gutters can get one dice on a skink, which is pretty crazy, so... Mm. Oh. And more Lizards. So was that three Lizards and one Skaven in that division, or have I miscounted? <laughs> no, it is. I yeah. hope the Skaven is ready for... <laughs> <laughs> So we will have some answers by the end of that group about the rat versus lizard matchup. I think, as Jimmy said, the, the gutter runner threat on the ball is is the big thing. Typically, the lizards won't have block on the skink, so that's interesting. Mm. Oh. And at last, there they are, Diomed, one of Jimmy's favourites, I think, for the competition. For sure, yeah. yeah great, great player. Oh, here he is. It's Mr. Page. Mr. Page, who is the only Blackhawk coach, and I have to say has taken an amazing build. It is a very, very punch first, ask questions later uh, build for the Blackhawks, which, hey, it's Blood Bowl. That can definitely win you some games. It's a punch first, ask questions when they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Castor on Dark Elves was... Uh, uh, lucky last addition, I suppose, to the uh, the World Championships. Unfortunately, we did have one coach who was unable to uh, take their ticket at the last second, and Castor was the person who was next in line from, I think it was the season four uh, ladder, Vitok can confirm, and so get that spot in at the last second. Yeah, the, the idea was if uh, we had no coach coming after the checking period, we will take the next in line in the last qualification qualificative season sorry so in season five actually even if the the, the forfeit coach is not coming perfect so yes castor was the last to join but that could be last in and then last out in first place we'll see two dark elves not a good matchup for the black elves dbbl qualifier <laughs> mr page is ready to smash he's in chat <laughs> 12 players left, so three groups left. 
So DMN, Mr. Page, Castor and Jonesy make up group M. Ivan Colin on Orcs for what it feels like too many times to say not a name I'm familiar with. Oh, no, no, I haven't, haven't heard of him. It's Spanish coach, apparently, so it's a lot the of, right there's a lot of good to, Spanish coaches. Right place to create a name for yourself. So we'll see. Sip gin on Orcs. Have not. I've not heard of him, but <laughs> the best place to make an area. Like that's the thing, and it was a lot of the people coming from the from like the community leagues. It's not necessarily too well known outside of that. Bright on necromantic. I think that's genuinely one of the greatest things about this competition. I think we're used to seeing certain people who compete uh, very regularly in competitions. Obviously, those of us who stream are very visible, and then we have certain people we run into on our streams who become very visible. Um, but that doesn't mean that those are the only players who are very very good at blood bowl there are lots of players out there who just haven't been in these same spaces and who we'll see in this competition but that is a more familiar name call troop on humans yeah one of the heroes wasn't he from the one of the probably the big story from the last one uh, getting right to third place incredible stuff humans always feel like underdogs in these tournaments so it's always easy to cheer for the humans uh, and indeed the nobility teams but we haven't had all the nobility teams yet have we or, or did we no nope. got two left yeah <laughs> speaking of <laughs> um in group o's first player andrew imperial nobility another of the i would say big names in this competition not on a team i would have guessed no <laughs> absolute top top coach and uh you know like runs the uh uh, playoffs and that doesn't he and uh, yeah incredible incredible at blood ball and uh, wow but imperial nobility <laughs> and another one they only face each other that's the nobility you know <laughs> this is this is the blood ball dream just two walls of bodyguards standing firm Tim, you'll be loving it <laughs> Gorgor Bay on Dark Elves breaks up the Imperial Nobility stranglehold on this division. Probably not your ideal matchup with Nobility. Nobility in some ways play best into the Bash teams if they can just hold them in place, whereas Elves can slip away more easily. It's a third! <laughs> what a <Okay>. division! <laughs> Five of them on three in a group at least. Yeah, at least you have one. Uh... We are guaranteed a okay. minimum of one Imperial Nobility in the knockout phase of the competition. Incredible. Well, less surprise now, but I would still <laughs> spin the, the wheel so we can talk about the coach. Hmm. Alan76, which I think is the only name on this last four that I'm not familiar with, but on Shambling Undead. Yeah, PlayStation qualifier, so yeah. I am sorry to the PlayStation qualifiers that we don't have that context. Hopefully next time we do this, we'll have much more knowledge of all of you. Um, Mongloom on Necromantic Horror, definitely a name I am more familiar with. And that is the last Necromantic team. Mm. Lord on Shambling Undead. I believe another Italian coach. Who's... Yeah, top top uh, table topper. Mm. He's, he's very high. Just right. because I like to spin. <laughs> <laughs> and one last spin for Niaga. The last name out the draw. Niaga has waited all the way to the end to see themselves drawn. Wood elves in what was quite. A, I think those were four different races in that last group, weren't they? Unless I mistook. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, I think so. Uh, I'm not not sure, but I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so After much. The spin ability. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vitok, for spinning the wheel for us. That was a lot of spins, but we've got through it all. And I know that in the background now we have uh, someone squirreling away for us, trying to put all the groups into files where we can access them uh, so we can hopefully show you all of those soon. Um, but let's go straight to it. Uh, Andy, was there a group there that jumped out for you as or 
Can you not remember now? Because it's all <laughs> come straight yeah. through. <laughs> Tell you what, Andy, you'll remember your group. How do you feel about your group? Uh, so, oh, oh, yeah. When it came out, I was like, oh, really excited about the Chaos cho uh, Chosen. I really want to see them get through to the, uh, the finals. And now I don't. Um, <laughs> I want to make sure I get through. Uh, but I, I'm really interested to see their build. Like, what have they done? I, I think that's definitely one of the more fascinating teams in there. Can you explain a bit more, like why they don't necessarily get taken so much? Because we touched on it while that was while that was going on, but perhaps wasn't a chance to um, to to explain that well. Yeah, so they're, they're one of the teams that starts with no like normal starting skills. They've got horns, but that's about it. So while you're adding skills because you're given a skill pack of maybe ten skills, you're hitting block, which is just a core skill on the team. Uh, everyone else, like orcs and Dwarves are adding guard to their already pre-existing block. They're just a they're a level like a header type thing, uh, and they're also just, you know, just a bit lightly armored. They can't run away. They've got lots of downsides. They're a great blank canvas. They probably need 25, 40 skills to cover their group. So. Yeah, I mean, basically, they don't, they don't get enough additional skills right to make up. That's that's the problem. Uh, it, generally like in these kind of tournaments they they just don't get the necessary skills to make them competitive but uh some people still take them uh some brave souls still take them but uh yeah i think it's going to be very very tough for them very tough i've got some exciting news which is that the incredible ollie from cyanide has been screaming away in the background and i can now start putting some groups up on the screen for everyone so uh let's uh get group a to d we can put on screen for you right now so uh, group A, to recap, is Blue Max on Necromantic Horror, Kayfogged on Dark Elves, Le Peg on Shambling Undead, and Jasek on Orcs. I think I saw Blue Max in chat a second ago saying uh, he or they believe that they are the oldest player in the draw, uh, which is uh, a, a claim that I cannot substantiate or uh, disagree with. I just don't know. Um, but a nice, very division there. Uh, group B was... Uh, Frankie129 on Shambling Undead, Arzawain on Imperial Nobility, Viking Cop on Lizard Men, and Ratimo on Imperial Nobility. So, two of our five Imperial Nobility in this group. Uh, group C was Jimmy's group Jimmy on Dark Elves, Kellathorn on Old World Alliance, Tumish on Orcs, Trauk on Shambling Undead. Uh, I've known Trauk for a while, and I'm still not sure if I'm saying their name right as Trauk or Truk. I'm sorry, Trauk or Truk. Um, group D, Ceramol on Shambling Undead, Jopils on Skaven, and Slaveback Magic on Humans, Gabias on Lizardmen. Uh, that's the first four. Which of those groups is your uh, one to watch, do you think, Jimmy? Um, well, I mean, I think mine is, of course. <laughs> but uh, I think it's it's interesting. There doesn't look any weak links in there at all. So, yeah, that, that is... I could have had a better group, honestly. Uh, that looks like... That's, I think that's going to be very tricky. Um, yeah, not, not too happy about that. And I think... Uh, Paul's group, you know, will be uh, will be tough as well <laughs> because he's in it. <laughs> how do, how do you feel about your matchups in that group, Jim? Do you do you think Dark Elves? You've got Old World Alliance, Orcs, and Champion Undead. Certainly some variety there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the, the great thing about Dark Elves is they're never really like too bad against anything. So um, you know, everything's going to be. I'm not going to get any auto wins, but also none of them are auto losers. That was why I went with Dark Elves. I thought, you know, there's going to be some playing in every game. And, and you know, I, why I won't get the free wins that, like, say, Wood Elves will get sometimes. Or, you know, Necromantic, if you're all like Andy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, while that won't happen, at least, you know, I'm hoping I can play well enough to uh, to get through. Andy, looking at Group A with KFO, you know, I, I'm slightly uncertain. I thought KFO was on Wood Elves. Perhaps that's a typo, or perhaps I was just misinformed on that. Um, it's, a, it's a typo. He's on Wood Elves. Okay, so he is on Wood Elves. I thought he would he would be um, from a conversation I'd had with him. So Andy, KFO's group. Are you looking at that and thinking easy peasy for KFO, the superstar we know he is, or do you think there's some potential hazards in there yet? I think he should be all right because the, the Necro, it's it's not a great matchup for Necro into what else because you don't typically have strict brawl protection. And if you do, you haven't got block on the ghoul. So that's a rough matchup. So you've got to be putting in favorite there. And against Le Peg, uh, again, he could also have, he's got the tools to deal with the undead. So I think he, he's got two very nice matchups. And then if the Orcs don't absolutely destroy him, he should be all right there as well. So I... He's such a strong coach. You've got to you've got to favour him to get out of that coach uh, that group, and so it's a question of which one of the other three 
probably makes it help. Yeah, that, that's why it's an interesting group, right? Isn't it? Because it's, it's because there's so, there's a giant there's a giant in there, and it's uh, it's going to be really really close between the other three. Is what, what might happen though is the other three know that they like, just get, if they can get a draw against Capo here, right? I'll play to win against the other teams. So it, it could be some bizarre uh, metering where people just play one way against him and and a different way, a bit more expansive way against each other. I'm, I'm slightly feeling bad now for Kefo too. I feel like we're just sticking the, the biggest target on poor Kefo's back, just saying he's the best, he's the best, he's the best. And and actually, as we all know, when you get into a game, there's all sorts of things in it, including dice, that um, make it a bit less simple than just the favourites out there and supposed to win every time. Um, other two groups there, Group B is the double imperial ability and Group D, we talked about Ceremon a bit. Um, any clear favourites you think in Groups B and D? And I think Arzawain looks pretty strong for Group B. Um, you know, not that I know much about some of the people. Um, and then, yeah, Ceremon, Ceremon's pretty strong. I think Ceremon's pretty strong. And maybe Gabias. Mm. I, I think Viking Cop said, sneaky good coach i think i'd definitely be interested with his lizards in there as well but um i uh, i'm super curious about ceremony now because all i've seen of ceremony as i said was that ridiculous defensive one turn on your stream so in my mind now that has to be an extremely strong player uh let's go on to groups e to h we have the uh i think i can call it the group of death that i'm in in group e uh strider again the reigning champion of uh well, if we consider the season finals to have been the the prelude to this, the reigning champion coming into this, uh, certainly an extremely good international Bloodville player anyway, plays tabletop as well. Um, Striders on Wood Elves, I believe it's showing faction here. Um, J-Lev, again, we mentioned it, Team USA player who has an extremely good tournament record in tabletop. And Pybot, I believe, was on team, was Pybot on Team Ireland for Eurobowl as well? Or am I... Am I wrong on that one? I think his dad was. I'm not sure he was. Okay. Still. Danton is his dad who, who plays for Team Ireland, I'm sure. Right. So I think that could be the group of death, but there's some other very uh, strong players on this page as well. Um, which of these other three groups stands out to you, Andy? Um, not H. Uh, if we could go back and look at E for a second. But the, 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 the point is that j might well have the team that actually might be able to deal with all that because he's got the access to being able to stack. Old World Alliance, for me, were one of the very few teams that might have been able to afford the, the stacking. So if he's got to tackle a mighty blow, that suddenly makes the two Wood Elf games much more palatable. And it also means he might be able to kill the against the, the Lizard main game. I, he's could he's could in chat out. saying, I did not stack. I split my tackle oh, with did. mighty blow. <laughs> well... Oh well, never mind. <laughs> Always next year. <laughs> I I think uh, I think J Lev um, has one thing to say is has a specifically a very good record with Old World Alliance on tabletop. So this was not just a question of oh it's a generous package. It's also a question of what we talked about before that thing of a team that you're comfortable on is part of it as well. And I think that's an interesting question, right, Andy? Like you said to me, you didn't love the Necro package, but it's still the team you took. Yeah, I, I think it, this the Eurobowl that's just happened on tabletop sort of taught me that, which is that if you can take the team that you're most familiar with, you'll get 100% out of that team. And that might well be worth more than being put on a team that you're not so familiar with and only getting 80% out of it. So let really play the team you're good with, is, is my advice. And your group, well, your group here as well? I'm sorry. Well, oh, sorry, I was going to say that's very interesting because Olivier Dulac is, you know, number one on tabletop by a mile, hasn't he? Has been for years with Skaven and he's taken Wood Elves because that's Wood Elves have point. got a generous package and maybe, maybe Olivier, you know, is taking this more seriously than he does tabletop, eh? <laughs> maybe he really secretly thinks Woody's are the best. I've played against Olivier on Wood Elves. He certainly knows how to play them as well. But I, do, I was surprised he didn't take Skaven just because, as you said, he's the world number one on Skaven. Um, that that might be the reason actually because I, I asked him about that and he told me that everyone is expecting me on Skaven. Um, mm -hmm. I have played a lot of Skaven lately, so people know I play. So I want to surprise people. So that's a strategy also. I am. <laughs> 
sorry, what was funny was, you know, uh, K-Fog, we were talking about him earlier, he always played Amazon and Blood Bowl 2, and in general, he played loads of Amazons, because his reasoning was, if he then picked up Dark Elves, like, they were just crazy, right, because everyone's got plus one AV for free, so maybe that's been Olivier's plan all these years, is now he's got plus, a, plus agility for free on everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly conscious that we're running a bit longer than we were meant to, so I'm going to speed us along a tiny bit. But Andy, we have got your group on the screen here, so I did want uh, just a quick comment on um, if there's anything else you want to say on your group. You already mentioned the Chaos Chosen team. Is there anything else you've got strong feelings on about your group while we've got them here on screen? Uh, so I'm uh, oddly enough, I spoke to Brakey uh, this week on Discord, so uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that game. The Wood Elf game is the one that worries me in that group, so uh, hopefully I can get a, a strong result there. And then we'll see how I can go on the others. I'd like to get out of that group. It would be would be nice. Uh, DC Matt, there are streaming plans, and we will get to that once we're done going through the groups. But there are definitely plans in place for streaming. We're moving on to groups I, J, K, and L. Um, Jimmy, is there a group here that you? Because this is no longer any of us. We've all been and gone now. Which is the group here that stands out to you? Oh. Well, maybe Group J, Went Ross, I, I don't really know Went Ross, but the fact that he's qualified from Ruby BL is, you know, he's got to be, he's got to be really strong. Matt Jake, we've seen from playoffs, Blood Bowl 2 and 3, Court Guy did quite well in the NAF Cup as well as uh, Rebel he qualified from. And Spartacus has just qualified from the playoffs, uh, like ladder playoffs. So yeah, that looks like a secondary group of death, maybe. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I, I have... Um because I play in Rebel and, and I um, played against Code Guy this uh, this season, I've, I've recent experience and definitely came across as a, as a strong coach to me. Spartacus, like you said, big name. Mad Jake on Orcs is, is the one that I'm, I'm super fascinated by just because um, because that is so different to what I've seen them playing before. Um, but uh, I've sped us through and now I haven't actually got the last set of groups up yet. So is there anything else here that we uh, want to pick out? Perhaps the fact that Group L has three Lizardmen teams in there. How's that as a mirror game, Andy? Is that a fun mirror game or is that one that's a slog to play through? It's not a team that I, I'm famous for playing. But <laughs> I'm a bit anti-Lizardmen, but I, I think chipping Saurus is the is the big one. So receiving in that game is where you know, that could make a big difference. Not losing a Saurus on the line of scrimmage, that's probably the biggest thing. But maybe the Bolo can do some stuff with his gutter runners. I'd like to see. I'd like to think he can. I'm I'm curious about Group K as well, Jimmy. Like, there's there's two orcs in there with the shambling undead. Um, I I don't know if I have a strong sense of who that matchup favours. Um, obviously undead with the mummies have such a a potential to do things with that punching power, but the overall strength advantage stays stays with the orcs. Yeah, it's an interesting one. It it depends on like the orc builds can vary a bit, and undead can to a lesser extent. People usually skill up the ghouls rather than the mummies, but putting guard on the mummies helps more in this specific matchup. And yeah, the orcs builds can vary a lot, so that might make them more or less favoured. And it's still pretty fifty fifty, and it's going to come down to you know to, are there really removals and stuff, things like that. It's going to make a difference. And, Pretty decent for Wood Elves. I think Undead are better for Wood Elves. I think Wood Elves struggle a bit more versus the Orcs. So, yeah, but I think Orcs and Undead, this could be two Orcs could go through. Yeah, with Wood Elves, I suppose one of the things is almost every build, not every build, but almost every build includes Strip Ball. So as soon as you get an opponent that has sure hands, there's that little bit of, oh, well, that's a wasted skill. And Orcs tend to have sure hands because of the thrower, um, but not not always, not always. Um, we can now go on to the last uh, four groups, which is groups M to P, uh, which, uh, well, I'm going to take us straight away to group M with Mr. Page and Diomed in it. Um, how do you see Mr. Page's, I don't want to spoil the roster completely, but I believe it's a six Mighty Blow Blackhawks roster hanging in with the Necromantic and the two Dark Elf teams. It's actually seven, right? Because the troll has mighty blow and block. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and then all six of the all six of the black orcs have mighty blow, and then the the dirty player, uh, not dirty, sorry, sneaky git goblin as well. So it's just it's all banging all the time. Um, I mean, I I think Diamed's obviously the favourite, but tough racial matchups. The Dark Elves. Um, we saw Seabros won Super League, and he beat all three Necromantic teams. There were three. There was Andy, myself, and Diamed all played Necromantic, and Seabros beat them all with Dark Elves. 
Um, so that's that's a tough racial matchup for him. And obviously, Mr. Page can get lucky versus anybody with all that mighty blow. I, I, I think the elf matchup is, is really interesting because on the one hand, no tackle seems bad. But um, Andy, you're a mighty blow aficionado. That can also just, especially with all the grab, lead to a lot of dead elves very quickly. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really glad I'm not playing Page's Black Orcs because that's got a tremendous amount of variance in it. You're going to have to put zombies on the line they're going to get potentially removed and then you suddenly staring down the barrel i, I think diamond's gonna he's a really good player but diamond's gonna have to work really hard to get out of that group that, that is not an easy set of racial matchups to win the black orc grab is also i suppose quite an annoying thing to deal with when you're necromantic and that sidestep on your wraith is such a big part of your plan the black orc grab just goes yeah not so much um it's huge. yeah interesting um, of the other groups, we've already touched on them, but there is that standout group O with three and pre on the ability. Do we have a favourite? Is it is it just Andrew? Because we all know Andrew, as you mentioned before, Jimmy, who runs the uh, the the playoff competition for ladder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, I think I think the favourite is Go Go Bay because he isn't he hasn't got imperial ability. <laughs> wow, wow, Jimmy. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> shots fired shots very very much fired um i think i'm gonna bring us to a conclusion now because we have been going a while um i uh yeah hang, oh, hang on have we frozen on here have i is that because of things i've been tapping around with uh hopefully we're not frozen on the thing i think i've brought us back okay uh, thank you uh, all so much for, for doing this this draw with us. Um, we should talk before we go about where people can watch the rest of, uh, not the rest of this, this isn't even the start, where they can watch the games when they get started. Uh, so there will be uh, casts of every single game in this competition. That's something I think we can guarantee you. Uh, they won't be on this channel. They will be official casts spread about between uh, Jimmy Fantastic's channel Andy Davo's channel and my channel. Uh, I know Jimmy is planning to try and cast every single game, not necessarily live because even Jimmy has to sleep sometimes. Um, yeah, sometimes. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get together sometimes to do some commentary together. Again, we all have different schedules and different commitments around the Blood Bowl, but it would definitely be great to do some together because as I said before, we're going to be building up to the... Uh, final eight where we'll all be together in a studio to do that um so yes from the final eight onwards that's all in one weekend the first weekend of december you can watch all of those games on this channel it's going to be mega it's going to be such such a a big exciting event um vitok is there anything that i haven't got to that you want to say about this competition before we sign things off no, I think every, everything has been uh, has been said. I'm I'm really looking forward for those group matches. Now that we know the the matchup that will be there, on the on as you said, uh, especially looking then for the knock up uh, knockout sorry, and the on the final eight with this format that I think will give us some uh, legendary matches. I hope. And yeah, I think it's a fantastic oh. format. Very excited to see the the format play out. Yeah, it's it's a it's super interesting with the the I suppose the best of three type games in the knockout stage that certainly adds a a, a level of intensity to things. I think once we get to the knockout, it's going to be really really tight. And and the groups again with three points for a win, one point for a draw, that has its own dynamic as well. So super exciting. Um, Andy, where is the best place for people to find you? Uh, Twitch TV forward slash Andy Davo. And also YouTube. Oh yes, if you if you type on YouTube, you'll find me. You should also find Jimmy as well. Um, you're on there. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, you're not going to self-publicize. So yeah. I was going to ask Jimmy, and he was going to say the same thing, but I don't really know why why it was worth doing. JimmyFantastic.com. You can go find my YouTube. Wow, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, and yes, you can find my content at twitchtv Tree as well as YouTube Miss Uh the, We will definitely you'll be seeing lots of us in the coming weeks because um, I know we're all streaming all of our our own games, and we will be doing. Uh, across the channels cast of all of the games so uh thank you so much I, I, yeah I would, I would like just to you know to, to finish still by uh, by thanking everyone uh for for well following uh, the stream obviously following the tournaments it's because we have people that play the game that watch what we're doing as well that you we can still move forward with the game and i want to thank cyanide as well for for all the work they have done through the year you know on the game and, and i think that will 
that's something that will uh, uh, d definitely be visible on the tournament we're doing here. And I want to thank you guys for the, the official cast you will be doing during uh, all those weeks. It's going to be a long competition, but very exciting one on all the tournament administrators as well that we have uh, working in the backstage to make all of this possible. And thank you guys for putting it on. I think, again, we're all so excited for it. So uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. That is going to be it from us. I'll sign out now and we will see you all very, very soon. Bye.